Hello, this is Nicholas Kosar, one of your associates of Colonel Philip Ludwell III. And we are here, as you just saw, a uh, uh, horse-drawn carriage going through Colonial Williamsburg. We're here at um, in the middle of Duke of Gloucester Street, where Philip Ludwell lived. I'll pan over to that view. This was his townhouse when he was in town, working there at the uh, Colonial State Capitol. So I'm going to give you uh, Nichols Chapman, our executive director, uh, to explain a little bit about this house. Hi. No, this, this is one of the most beautiful structures in Colonial Williamsburg, one of the few truly original structures here that was the first property acquired by the Colonial Williamsburg Foundation back in the 1920s. And there's a plaque over there will tell you uh, that it was constructed during the life of Philip Ludwell III in the 1750s when he was a member of the Royal Governing Council of Colonial Virginia in the chambers at the end of the street here. Uh, but I want to, he left, he left the house, ceased to use the house in 1760 when he moved to London. And I just wanted to briefly tell a story we haven't told before about this house, uh, which comes from 64 years after Philip Ludwell III left. And that concerns a, a very well-known figure of American history, but a Frenchman, the Marquis de Lafayette, who paid his final visit to the United States in 1824 and landed at Norfolk, Virginia, where, intriguingly, he was greeted by a delegation from the Congress uh, who deputed a man called Captain William Lewis uh, to lead that delegation. And Captain William Lewis was the owner of a property near Lynchburg, Virginia, called Mount Athos, about which perhaps we will return in more detail later. But where all these stories inter intersect of orthodox interest is that when Lars Lafayette was visiting on that trip, he came here to Williamsburg from Norfolk and he had dinner at the Ludwell Paradise House uh, with a man called James Lee. And James Lee, from some of the documents we found in Texas, appears to be effectively the leader of a some sort of continuing lay orthodox community here uh, into the early 19th century. And James Lee connects to the Ludwell. He's a mysterious figure. He seems to have nothing to do with the famous Lee family of Virginia, uh, but he connects to the Ludwells uh, by virtue of his wife, who is one of the many Ballet sisters. And amongst the other Ballet sisters, uh, there is the wife of Philip Ignatius Barziza, uh, who is the great grandson of Philip Ludwell III, uh, and through the family connection is uh, having an interest in this house at that, at that time in the 1820s. And another Ballet sister is married to a Mr. Barlow, who lives in the Brown house here across the street. And so all these, all these people connect and, and have um, appear in the records uh, connected with this lay Orthodox community. So Lafayette, and Lafayette appears to connect uh, to all of them uh, via another French family who are connected to the Ballets, uh, who seem to have some sort of aristocratic connections with Lafayette going back to the south of France in the 18th century. Uh, so there's nothing like a small world after all. And there's all these different structures. Uh, again, this is, I think, the Barlow, what's the Barlow House or the George Reed House, as it's now called, I think is the fourth structure acquired by Colonial Williamsburg. Uh, so we really are here in the, the epicenter of early America, and the Ludwells and Ludwell relatives are very much intertwined with all of that. 